Hi, I'm Tammy Sorensen. Welcome to another episode of The Children's Heart Cry. Today's episode is specifically going to focus on love, the highest and greatest resonating frequency of all. Every individual throughout the entire earth longs for love. Songs have been written about looking for love in all the wrong places. Love is the motivation in our lives, of our lives. The only perfect love was demonstrated by our Heavenly Father in His Son. His love alone fills the deep longing in every single heart. It is only in His love that we can know and be known by love, authentic, infinite agape love, unconditional love. It is only through His love that we can truly love ourselves and others. In my new book, Children's Heart Cry, The Sound of a Generation, I share a vision and a prophetic word about a double hammer strike revelation I received. A double hammer strike comes when the word and the piano, both as hammers, strike and release a sound, a higher resonating frequency sound that breaks through in the power of his loving kindness. You can read more on that in Jeremiah 23, 29, Psalm 33, 3, and Psalm 144, verses 1 and 2. Today, I will decree from 1 Corinthians 13 using two different translations, the Passion Translation and the Message Translation. At the same time, I will psalm spontaneously with Holy Spirit as my conductor in C528 Hertz, the frequency of love. You can research Dr. Leonard Horowitz and Dr. Joseph Puleo for additional information on that frequency. I also add a layer of voices to represent the deepest longing in our hearts, in the hearts of his children to receive a revelation of his loving presence and breakthrough while listening through a double hammer strike. Tune in again next week for another episode of The Children's Heart Cry. And in the meantime, be blessed as you listen to the meditation of renewing your heart, renewing your mind, renewing your body, renewing your spirit, renewing your soul. If I were to speak with eloquence in earth's many languages and in the heavenly tongues of angels, yet I didn't express myself with love, my words would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. And if I were to have the gift of prophecy with a profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, and if I possessed unending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but have never learned to love, then I am nothing. And if I were to be so generous as to give away everything I own to feed the poor and to offer my body to be burned as a martyr without the pure motive of love, I would gain nothing of value. Love is large and incredible.
incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty. It finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Love never stops loving. It extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It is more enduring than tongues, which one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. Our present knowledge and our prophecies are but partial. But when love's perfection arrives, the partial will fade away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I spoke about childish matters, for I saw things like a child, and I reasoned like a child. But the day came when I matured, and I set aside my childish ways. For now we see but a faint reflection of riddles and mysteries, though reflected in a mirror. But one day we will see face to face. My understanding is incomplete now. But one day I will understand everything. Just as everything about me has been fully understood. Until then, there are three things that remain. Faith. Hope. and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run.
if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's words with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to the mountain, jump, and it jumps, but don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, no matter what I believe and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head. It doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first. It doesn't fly off the handle. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Love doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Love puts up with anything, trusts God always, and always looks for the best. Never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth. A person who is truth. And what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompleteness will be canceled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly, just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God.
hope unswervingly. and love extravagantly. The best of the three is love. 